Hey guys, this is the video for 6.1, so the start of chapter 6, which is Applications of Integration. Remember that 6.1 will be on the exam coming up along with all of chapter 5. 6.2 we will cover after this coming exam, and it will be on the last in-class exam with chapter 7. Okay, so let's dive into 6.1. 6.1 uh, is over areas of regions in the plane. All right, so we'll still be talking about areas using definite integrals like we talked about in 5.4. Um, but here we'll be talking about areas you can get a little different way. Specifically, we'll talk about the area between two curves or the area between the graphs of two different functions. So in 5.4, we found a lot of areas, but it was always the area we said under the curve or between the graph and the x-axis. Here, instead of just talking about the area between a graph and an x-axis, we'll talk about the area between two graphs sitting in a plane, right? And we'll do that with definite integrals. Okay, so let's uh, go back to what we were doing in 5.4 for just a bit. Let's try to find the area under the graph or between the graph and the x-axis of this function f of x is 2x plus 2 from 0 to 2, right? So let's recall how to do that. Here I'll graph that guy. We're, we've got this graph. It's a straight line. Um, and we want to find the area between the graph and the x-axis from 0 to 2, which I've shaded in red. So recall how we do that is using a definite integral. So specifically, the definite integral, right, we're starting over here at x equals 0. So we're going to start at 0, and we're ending when x is 2. So we're going to end at 2. And then we stick our function in this definite integral. And that definite integral will give us the area shaded red there between the graph of f of x and the x-axis. OK, so what do we get when we do this? Um, you guys should pause the video. Do it on your own. You should know how to do that. It'd be a good refresher. Uh, so I'll give you a second to pause it and do that. Uh, and then we'll see if we get the same thing. Okay, so take the antiderivative. You get x squared plus 2x. And we're going to evaluate that from 0 to 2. When you plug in 2, you get 4 plus 4 minus, when you plug in 0, you get 0 plus 0, and so that is 8. So the area of this shaded region is 8, right? So we've got one box, that would give us an area of 1, another area of 1, another area of 1, so there's 4, 2 more up here gives us 6, and then these two triangles each have an area of 1 as well, right? You could count that out if you didn't know this definite integral, but it is 8. Okay. All right, this is another practice from 5.4. We've got the graph of 0.5x squared plus 1. We want to find the area under the graph, which is the area between the graph and the x-axis, from 0 to 2, and I've shaded that here in blue. So again, we do that with a definite integral. We're starting at x equals 0 and ending at x equals 2. So we're going to integrate from 0 to 2. Stick our function in there. And that in definite integral will give us the area here. Okay, I'll give you guys a second to pause this and see if you can do this on your own. A nice little refresher, 5.4. Okay, so take the antiderivative, the 0.5 comes along for the ride. x squared becomes x cubed over 3. And plus 1 becomes plus 1 times x, which is just x. And we're going to evaluate that from 0 to 2. Alright, so when you plug in 2, you get 4 thirds for that first guy, so make sure that's what you get, plus 2. And when you plug in 0, you get 0 minus 0, so what is 4 thirds plus 2? It's 10 thirds, 3.33, right? 3 and a third. So 10 thirds. Uh, 
three and a third. So that's the area of this region that is shaded blue. And you can imagine that these two boxes here give you area of two. This guy gives you most of one, and then this guy and this guy push you over that three and into three and a third for the area. But whatever, that's okay. That's just visualizing. So now we're gonna talk about the area between two curves. All right, so I have the exact same f of x and the exact same g of x, and I want the area between them from zero to two. So how does that show up in the graph? Well, remember, this is the exact same red graph and blue graph that I just had. So this red shaded region starting at the graph and going all the way down to the x-axis, all the way down to here. That was the definite integral from zero to two of f of x. And we knew that that red area, right? So that was the definite integral from zero to two of f of x dx. And we already calculated that and got that it was eight. For this blue area, which starts here at the graph and goes all the way down to the x-axis as well. Blue. What did we get? Well, remember that was the definite integral from 0 to 2, and then we stuck g of x in there. And for that, we got 10 thirds. Okay, so now if I want the area between the graph of f of x and the graph of g of x, well, how does that show up on the graph of the two functions? We use green for this one. Well, it's going to be all of the red minus the blue, right? So the area between them is what I'm shading in here in green. That's the stuff between the two functions. And that area is the red area minus the blue area. When you do that, you're left with just that red area that's left, which I've shaded in green. All right. so if we do red minus blue, that's gonna get us that green area. And so that rephrasing it is if we do the area but under the graph of f of x, and then subtract the area under the graph of g of x, that's going to give us the area between those two graphs. So what is that? Well, that red area was eight, blue area was 10 thirds. So what's eight minus 10 thirds? Well, that's 14 thirds. So 14 thirds is the area that I've shaded in green between the two graphs. And notice that we could write that as a definite integral using this here, right? The area of the red was the integral from zero to two of f of x dx. And the area from the blue, which we subtracted from the red, was the integral from zero to two of g of x dx. And that gives us the area between the two graphs. So the area between the two graphs is given by this definite integral, which equals 14 thirds. Okay, so we can use definite integrals to find the area between the two graphs of the graphs of two functions, and we're going to do it by subtracting. And what'll that, what that'll always do is give us the area beneath the bigger guy. In this case, that was the red one. And then we'll let's say that one more time here. If f and g are two continuous functions, and then the where f is greater than or equal to g. So that's f is on top. That was like our red guy from before. So the guy on top is f. Right? Then the area bounded by the graphs and x equals a and x equals b is the definite integral from a to b of f, the top guy, minus g, the bottom guy. So again, to find the area between two curves, you do the definite integral from wherever you're starting of x equals a to wherever you're ending from x equals b and you do the top guy minus the bottom guy. So let's do an example here. Let's find the area of the region bounded by the graphs of f and g here. Uh, 
from x equals and bounded by x equals 0 and x equals 2 so we're going to go from x equals 0 to x equals 2 we know this is going to show up as a definite integral we're starting at 0 and we're ending at 2 and that last slide told us that the, the way to find the area between these two guys is to take the difference where we do the top guy minus the bottom guy so what we need to figure out next is which one of these is the top guy and you can do that in a few ways um, but what would be easiest is to graph them so I've graphed them here where the red is the red guy and the blue is the blue guy and you can see from this graph that if we're going from 0 to 2 that the red guy is on top the whole time All right so we're looking for this area here in green assuming I can draw in the lines which I kind of can All right so that area in green is going to be given by this definite integral so the top guy is what well that was f of x the red guy so that's x plus 4 the bottom guy is what well that was the blue guy which was g of x and that was x squared plus 1 All right so I drop both of those in there be careful to put parentheses around especially especially the the bottom guy the one that's going to be subtracted because you have to remember to distribute that negative sign so I like to just throw big parentheses around both and then go from there so this definite integral will give us the area of that green region right and so that would be the area under the red guy minus the area under the blue guy and what we'd be left with is just that green stuff okay so let's take this definite integral so first thing we might do is simplify this and by that I mean combining our like terms so we've got an X that's the only X we've got a plus 4 here but we also have a minus 1 so that's going to be plus 4 minus 1 is plus 3 and then we've got a minus X squared right and it doesn't matter what order you write that uh, if you like to write the squared guy first that's fine um, but we want to combine those before we take this antiderivative to make it easier so we don't have to do quite so many steps all right so let's take the antiderivative what do we get x squared over 2 from the x plus 3x minus x cubed over 3 and we're going to evaluate that from 0 to 2 okay so uh, plug 2 in and what do you get make sure you can get the same thing that I get but what I got was 16 thirds all right I combined all of that already but make sure you get that 16 thirds and when you plug in 0 you get 0 so then that green area is 16 thirds which is about you know it's 15 thirds is 5 plus one more third is 3 3 repeating so whichever one of those you want to give me is fine um, and that's going to give you the area of the green region so again we integrated definite integral from the lower x value to the higher x value and we did the top guy minus the bottom guy and that gives us the area between those two, for example so find the area oops of the region bounded by the graphs of f of x g of x x equals 0 and x equals 1 All right, so we're talking about the area between two graphs so we know it's going to, going to be a definite integral since we're going from 0 to 1 we're going to take the definite integral from 0 to 1 and now we need to do the top guy minus the bottom guy so again we need to figure out which one of these is the top guy and which one is the bottom guy so let's look at the graphs right we're going from 0 x equals 0 to x equals 1 Right, and so that's this green stuff here and from x equals 0 to x equals 1 the red guy there is on top and the red guy was e to the x so the top guy was e to the x and the bottom guy was the blue guy which was x to the 4 so that definite integral from 0 to 1 of e to the x minus x to the 4 will give us the area of the region bounded by the graphs from 0 to 1 right we did the top guy minus the bottom guy so let's do this definite integral now to do that we take the antiderivative the antiderivative of e to the x is e to the x and for x to the 4 that's going to become x to the 5 over 5 
And we want to evaluate that from 0 to 1. So plug in 1 and you get e minus 1 fifth. Plug in 0, you get e to the 0 minus 0. Remember, e to the 0 is just 1. So that's e minus 1 fifth minus 1, which is e minus 6 fifths. That's your exact answer. If you want to give it an approximate, that's about 1.52. So that is the area of that green region, the area bounded by the graphs of f and g from 0 to 1. Again, we did the definite integral from our starting x value 0 to our ending x value 1. And then we did the top guy, top minus the bottom guy. Okay, let's do another example here. To find the area of the region completely enclosed by f of x and g of x. So what is that that's completely enclosed, right? This is different from the other two we've done, right? This one doesn't give us like x equals 0 and x equals 1. We're going to have to figure out what x values, uh, where we're starting and where we're ending for those x values. What x values are going to be our bounds for our definite integral. And the way we're going to do that is by seeing where these functions are equal. And so let's look at a graph to help us to see what I mean by that. So the, air, the area of the region completely enclosed, that's what we're trying to find. Well, the region completely enclosed, if I graph here f of x and g of x, again, f is red and g is blue, completely enclosed means I just want this stuff Right, and it's it's whatever's in between them for the whole time that there is and in between, right? Um, that's what we mean by this completely enclosed. So what we're going to have to do is figure out where to integrate from, right? So that it stops. I'm sorry, it starts from the left, right there, whatever that x value is, and it ends over here, right? So we're going to have to figure out what those bounds of integration are. Right, we know we want to integrate, but we need to figure out where to integrate from for our definite integral. And the way we're going to do that, whether or not you can read it off the graph, right? You might be able to look at the graph and say, like, oh, I think I know what the x values are. You have to do this algebraically. You have to solve for this algebraically. I don't want you just reading it off the graph. So the way you do that is you set the two graphs equal to each other. Right? We're going to say, where do those graphs intersect? And then integrate in between those values, right? So we're going to set them equal to each other, find out what x values we get from that, and those will be exactly where these graphs intersected, and that's the bounds of our integration. Right? So what is that? That's x equals 2 minus x squared. We want a 0 on one side, so I'll add the right side over, and we'll get an x squared plus x minus 2 equals 0. Factor your quadratic. I'm assuming you guys are pretty comfortable with this stuff. If not, you can watch the video again or YouTube it if you need to remember how to factor quadratics. Um, anyway, so x squared plus x minus 2, that factors to what? Well, we got x minus 1 and x plus 2. So if that's set equal to 0, we're going to set each piece equal to 0 individually. So x minus 1 becomes x equals 1 and x plus 2 becomes x equals negative 2. Right? And that's exactly what this looked like, that this was at negative 2, and this was at positive 1. All right, so we now know our boundary graph here. We know that it's whenever x equals 1 and x equals negative 2. Those are going to be our bounds. All right, so the lower of those two guys is negative 2. So for our definite integral, we want to take the definite integral from negative 2 to 1. All right, so we found our bounds. Now we're going to take the definite integral using those bounds. And now we're going to do just like we did before. It's the top minus the bottom. In this case, g of x, the blue guy, is on top the whole time. So that's what, what's going to come first. g of x minus the bottom guy, which was the red one, f of x, which is just x. So that definite integral will give us the area of this green region here. So what is that definite integral? Well, 
antiderivative of 2 is 2x minus we're going to get an x cubed over 3 minus an x squared over 2 and we're going to evaluate that from negative 2 to 1. Okay, so when you plug in 1, what do you get? When you plug in negative 2, what do you get? I'll let you guys do that. But your final answer should be 4.5 or 9 halves. And that's the area of the region completely enclosed by those two graphs. So on this slide, I was going to have the intro video for the show The Office just automatically play. Um, and I did that, and then once I uploaded it to YouTube, YouTube block, blocked it because of NBC's copyright on their show for some silly reason. Anyway, so now I have to go back and obviously can't put that in there. So you guys should pause the video here, go watch the intro to The Office, um, you know, get in the mood and, and then come back with you know the office in mind and then continue so after that brief intermission I just wanted us to get warmed up here to some word problems that are going to be office themes so I figured we might as well watch the intro um, so let's look at an example here it says Dwight Schrute has determined that Schrute Farms annual revenue in thousands of dollars is given by this function R of T and its annual cost, again in thousands of dollars, is given by this function C of T. Here T is the number of years since Dwight inherited the farm. Okay, now the question is, what is Schrut Farm's accumulated profit in Dwight's first 10 years of owning the farm? Right. So we have revenue, uh, annual revenue, and we have annual cost. We want the accumulated profit. Right? So how are we going to do that? Well, if we're talking about accumulated profit, you should think that we should integrate against uh, annual profit, maybe, and that's correct. But we need to figure out what that profit function is. And so recall that profit is revenue minus cost. And so revenue is t squared plus 99 minus the cost, which is minus 0 0.01 t cubed plus t plus 100. So what is the annual profit for Schrute Farms? Well, that's 0 0.01 t cubed plus t squared minus t plus 1. Oops, minus 1, sorry. So that's Dwight's annual profit, right? In year t, when Dwight has it, that's the profit he makes in that year. Okay, so if we want the accumulated profit in his first 10 years, we're going to take the integral from 0 to 10 of this profit, right? And so notice that this profit came out as a difference. It was revenue minus cost. And it doesn't matter if you take the difference ahead of time like we've done here and find the profit or if you stick it in that integral and then simplify things, right? It doesn't matter at all. So when you get to these problems in the book where you're going to have to be doing revenue and profit and subtracting other things, uh, the idea is just that we're integrating um, a difference, right? Whether or not you simplify that difference first is okay. All right, so what is this? Well, that's the integral from 0 to 10 of 0 0.01 t cubed plus t squared minus t minus 1. But I can't write it that fast, even if I can say it that fast. There we go. All right, so that's our integral. Now take that antiderivative and plug in 10, then plug in 0. I'm going to let you guys do all that because I think you have plenty of practice at it. Oops, I forgot a 1 here somewhere. Um, so that's the definite integral that we're talking about here, right? So uh, go ahead and pause the video, see if you can do that on your own uh, first, and then we'll see if we get the same thing. Okay, so for 0.01t cubed, the 0.01 comes along for the ride, 
t cubed becomes t the 4 over 4 plus t squared well that's going to become plus t cubed over 3 minus t is going to become minus t squared over 2 and minus 1 is going to become minus t and that's what we're going to evaluate from 0 to 10 all right so if you plug in 10 uh, I'm going to simplify things first but when you plug in 10 you get 895 over 3 when you plug in 0 you get 0 and so the answer here for the total profit is just 895 over 3 which is about 298 uh, well, it's exactly 298 and a third, which is about 298.333. All right, so if we want to write that as far as dollars, remember that this is in thousands of dollars. So in 10 years, the accumulated profit that Dwight makes is 298,300. Let's look at another example. So it says that the current profit for athlete, which as we all know, uh, used to be called athlete is 10 million a year right so athlete is making 10 million dollars per year and then Jim estimates that over the next five years right so over the next five years that the profits going to increase at a continuous rate somewhere between two percent and five percent right so he says we're gonna increase our profit I don't know how much maybe between two and five percent right if it increases at a rate of two percent then this function here, labeled with a 2%, P2% of T, that's going to give you the new annual profit. And if it increases at a rate of 5%, then this function here is going to give you the new annual profit for the 5%. Right, so you have a couple of homework problems like this in the book. Uh, it's a lot of words, but uh, this is what's important. right? The stuff I've boxed and, and underlined. The next five years and the two different functions. Okay, so when you see this in the book, I, I would recommend taking your time and reading through it and then just sort of identify what's important. And what's important here is that we're talking about over the next five years, and these are the two functions that we're talking about. Okay, so now it says both functions are in millions of dollars per year, and for both, t is the number of years from now. So, approximate the total difference in accumulated profit under the two models. So how can we find the total difference in accumulated profit? Well, if these are both giving us an, an annual profit, if we integrated them, that would give us an accumulated profit. And if we're talking about the difference in accumulated profit, then we're going to integrate their difference. Right? So that is to say, uh, another way to say that, this 2 percenter guy, we could figure out the total profit if, let's say that the 2% the was the correct thing if that's how it actually went this could give us the actual accumulated profit over the next five years if this five percenter guy was correct then it would give us the actual accumulated profit over the next two years and what we're wondering here is what is the difference right we've got this range two percent to five percent if the two percent is right we'll get however much profit and if the five percent is right we'll get however much profit but what's the difference in profit between those two estimates. And so the way we're going to do that, since we're accumulating the profit, we're going to take the definite integral over the next five years gives us from zero to five. So that was underlined up here and that was important. And now what we want to do is take the difference of these two guys, where the one that's going to give us more, the top guy is first, and the one that's going to give us less, which would be the bottom guy if we graphed them, would be second because we're going to subtract it. So which one of these would give us more? Well, that's this higher percentage. Or you could graph them and double check, but the one that's going to give you a higher percentage increase is going to give you more profit. All right, so what we want to do here is take the definite integral of the P5% of T minus the P2% of T. And that will give us the difference in accumulated profit, right? Where we're taking the difference in the two annual profits and when we integrate that'll give us the difference in the accumulated profits okay so what is that well, we get the definite integral from 0 to 5 of 10 e to the 0.5 t minus 10 e to the 0.2 t dt 
All right, so take the antiderivative and you get 10 e to the 0.5 t over 0.5 minus 10 e to the 0.2 t over 0.2. And that's what we're going to evaluate from 0 to 5. And when you plug in 5 and plug in 0, double check that you get this, but what I got is 4.22. So the difference in the accumulated profit is going to be 4.22, and this was in millions of dollars, which it says uh, somewhere up here. Here we go, millions per year. So when we integrate, we'll end up with just an accumulated millions. So the difference in the two profits is $4.22 million over the next five years. The end of 6.1, so there is your homework. Um, make sure you guys come to class with any questions and all of that good stuff. Um, and I'll see you guys next time.